and this is it. My wife's been corking. Dude, when I walk back through that door to go home this evening to our other home, what I want to do is I want to have that wall down and I want to have this floor laid. That's a Herculean task. And then you'll see it continues along this here, down here. Awful, horrible, just everywhere. I think four hours is the realistic factory recommendation for what we're doing. I'm not gonna wait four hours. <laughs> Hi guys, exciting day today. We've just got the keys back for our old new house. And this is it. It's a, a fantastic house. And it's an old Victorian house, really well built. Well, I guess I'll show you around. This will, uh, there's gonna be a lot of changes over the next couple of weeks, but this is the kitchen, which was put in maybe eight years ago, 10 years ago. So the story is my wife and I rented this house. We lived in this house for about a dozen years and the previous landlord put in this new kitchen. I'll talk to you all about our plans in a minute. Let's just walk through. And then out here, we've got a really, really small utility room with the boiler in, which has just fallen on me. <laughs> so this is the utility room. And this is where, it was one of the places we're considering having our washing machine, dryer, things like that. And then out here, a little small bathroom with a shower. It's quite difficult to show you it properly because it's fairly tight, but that's fine. That's great, it's fine. So this is the kitchen, which we're gonna rejig. And then as we come out of the kitchen, we step into the dining room, which is a nice size, nice big size. We've taken this wallpaper off the wall already. My wife did that. So it's got this uh, wood burner in, which we're going to be replacing with a new one. This one's a bit knackered. It's all seized up and a lot of it you can't open anymore. But this is the dining room. And if I step back over here into the far corner and show you from the kitchen, that's the wall that we're gonna take out across here. So we're gonna take all this wall out, which is masonry, it's quite thick. Um, and that's gonna open up the dining room and the kitchen into one room. It's also got these original Victorian tiles, which I personally kind of like, but my wife abhors them. So we're gonna replace the flooring in the kitchen and in here. We're gonna replace the flooring right through. So yeah, this is gonna be much more open plan and uh, form our new sort of living space, if you like, just like the old house. And then in here, we're into the front room. This is the room that we did a little bit of work on before we left. So I put in a new hearth and the fire surround and stuff. We're gonna, again, we're gonna put in a new wood burner here, but that won't be for a few months. We can't afford to do everything we'd like to do straight away. We're gonna make our new houses for our animals under the stairs there and probably have room for hats and coats and stuff. It's got a bay window and this is south facing. So that's looking out into the garden. And the garden's just, it's bigger than I remember it. So that's brilliant, that's awesome. And then we go up the stairs. We've got a bathroom in here with a really old bathroom suite, which needs replacing at some point again. So we'll put a new bathroom suite in here, new flooring, but no rush on that. That We can, we can live with that for a little while, I think. Something else it's got, which you don't get in new builds, is this incredible storage cupboard here. So. You remember me saying downstairs, we were thinking about having our washing machine and tumble dryer in the utility room. This is another potential place for it. I really like the idea of putting the washing machine next to the bathroom. I mean, this is where our bedrooms are. This is where we get dressed. The bathroom is where we get undressed. It just seems silly to be carting our dirty clothes downstairs, do the washing and then cart them all back upstairs. So. That's a plan, whether or not that's what'll happen, we don't know. This is the master bedroom. Um, again, it just needs a little bit of love, redecorating and some storage. So we're gonna be building our built-in wardrobes there and probably some storage built in either side of the bed there, which will probably go up against that chimney breast. That's where it was before. This is the second bedroom, my daughter's bedroom. Again, a little bit of TLC is all that's required in here. And when we moved in, this space here was 
the third bedroom. Tiny, tiny third bedroom because these stairs weren't here. Upstairs was just a loft. So we put these stairs in and did a loft conversion before we moved out. So this space here, I think, is going to be the new office. We're gonna squeeze it into this area here. I can probably show you a bit better from up the stairs. Well, that area there, in between that little bit of sudwork, we'll probably build a desk and then shelving all up the walls. And that will probably form the office. And then finally, we've got the two bedrooms on the second floor. These are bedrooms that I put in when I did the loft conversion. This is the first, and this is the second. We've got a roof leak, which we've known about for a little while. So that's one of the first things we're gonna to have to take care of, as well as all the, all the work downstairs. So there's gonna be a hell of a lot going on. And that there is the garden, which is actually bigger than I remember. There's gonna be plenty of room out there for us to grow in. So yeah, overall, I'm feeling really happy. It's, it's all better than I remember. It's all bigger than I remember. So yeah, definitely, definitely big enough for us. So my wife and I are just working out where everything's gonna go now and doing a bit of planning and then I'll be getting stuck into the work. I'm about to set about taking this wall out here and we're basically opening it right up through to the kitchen. So this wall right back to that corner is gonna come out, maybe, maybe just there, maybe a bit further. The first thing you need to consider whenever you're thinking about taking out a wall is what's above it. So the first step, obviously we, we know the house, we've surveyed the house. Above here, we've got a doorway, but the doorway's hard up against this wall. So the doorway comes to about here, something like that. And then above, from here up is wall upstairs. So what we need to do, we need to put a lintel in here to support that. Now, of course, we can't put the lintel in at the moment because there's a wall in the way. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to temporarily support everything above with something called acros. Now what I've done, I've just made a few inspection holes here so we can see what we're doing. And what we've got here, we've got floor joists that run this way and they run into this wall. You can see one here. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a temporary support here that's gonna hold those floor joists up. We're gonna do that both sides of this wall. And what that's gonna do is gonna hold everything above it in place while I then remove this. So we'll get to remove this, then put a new lintel in, and then take the temporary supports out. That's the plan. So I can't do very much now until I go and get myself my acros, which are gonna be the supports, and the lintel. So that'll be the next job for me. This electric, we're going to reroute it. I'm not sure where, we'll figure that out as we go, but we've got electric here and the other side, and we've also got all of this surface fixed wiring. This whole house has got so much surface fixed wiring and plumbing that we're gonna also try and resolve throughout this project. Right, now I don't want you guys to think I'm racing off ahead of you. There's not a lot happened here, and I'll talk you through what has happened. Now, I did say that the next thing I wanna do is go off and get those supports, and that's true, that hasn't changed, but, I had appointments here at the house for two people to come and price up a new kitchen for me or some new kitchen worktop and units and stuff. So I couldn't leave and I'm still waiting for the second one now. And I didn't really wanna just sit on my hands and do nothing. So all I've done is I've taken off some of the render just to expose this wiring. Now obviously I've shut off all the electricity at the mains and the wiring in this house is old, shall we say. So this is the 240 plug socket down there. And then this is two sets of lighting switches, one for the dining room, one for the kitchen. So I've just exposed all of that, got it away from the wall so that when we come to take it down, that's one less thing I have to do at the time. And another thing, especially on these old houses, if you can take off the render fairly easily, and it's coming off fairly easy here, it makes the process of knocking the wall down that little bit easier because you can see where you're gonna hit. And for me, for a builder at least, that makes a significant difference because I'm gonna hit those bricks in certain places. When I, it's nothing I can really describe or tell you about, but I'll get a feel for it as the wall comes down and I'll get a feel for where I should be striking it with a chisel or a hammer. So you can see the difference it's gonna make when all of that there is gone and we're opened up into the kitchen. It's gonna allow so much more light through as well into the dining room. So that's where we are. Interestingly, this I think would have been the original front door of the house when it was first built. See that little arch there? Um, I might be wrong, but I think this would have been the original front door.
And back in Victorian times, look, this, this is the wall tie. You see it's tied across with bricks every so often across the cavity. Before wall ties were invented. Right, so I'm just waiting for my kitchen man now and then I am gonna go off and get the bits I need. My wife's been caulking. Right, so I've now got my lintels. Two reinforced concrete lintels. So they're made of concrete, they've got a reinforced bar running through them. These cost me 20 pounds each. And then down here, I've got my acro and to hire that for a day because I'll have it back tomorrow. I think it's about eight quid. So less than 50 quid this is gonna cost, I think. Right, time for me to uh, get on with it, I think. Okay, so I was hoping that I'd have all this wall out today, day one. But that's not gonna happen because I hadn't accounted for the difference in height in the ceiling here in the kitchen to the dining room. There's quite a significant step. And where the ceiling steps down into the kitchen, I'm having to put this lintel in a lot lower than I would have liked. It's still at door height, so it's plenty high enough but it's not where I was planning, much higher. And what that means is, there's obviously a significant portion of wall that needs to be rebuilt there now. There's, it's kind of five or six little, little problems all compounding one another because when I went to go and hire the Acro, they only had one. I wanted two, because if I had two, I could support both sides of this wall at once. Then I could just drop it and then put the lintels in and then fiddle around above. But, because I've only got one acro, I'm having to do this side, rebuild it, then move the acro and use it the other side to support. So it is what it is, there's nothing I can do about it. But it also means, because it's five o'clock, I was planning on working quite late this evening, I'm gonna knock it on the head and come back to it tomorrow because I don't have any sand or cement. So I can't fill in this area here. I've got the tiniest bit of sand and cement. I've got enough to bed the lintel on and then do what little bit of packing I thought there would be but there's a significantly larger amount. So the only thing I can do is come back tomorrow with more materials and just have a really good day at it. So that's the plan. So in case you're wondering, this acro tightens on this spindle here. Not spindle, what do you call that? Thread, it tightens on this thread here and picks up the weight. And this will hold two tons. And you can see the floor joists that run through here. So they run right across this room that way. There's one there, there's one there. So this acro is now taking the weight of all of those floor joists. And the masonry above is only from there to there. It's just a couple of bricks. It's almost nothing. And that's almost self-supporting. I'd say it's about two bricks out. So if you imagine here, it would be like if this went all the way up, you can see I've taken out a brick and a half back here and there's no risk of this going anywhere. That's still solid until I hit it with a hammer. So it's almost self-supporting. We're supporting very, very little weight there beyond the floorboards upstairs. So that's what that's doing. And obviously those, those joists are also going to help brace that bit of masonry there. So it's all safe, it's not going anywhere, but it's just a shame. It's a shame because I'm working in the evening, everywhere's closed. It's too late for me to go and get anything I need. So we are where we are, and I think I'm gonna make the most of this one five o'clock finish because there'll be precious few for me in the next two weeks. But overall, I'm a bit disappointed, <laughs> but only in myself. My wife's got on fantastically. She's been sanding and she's been sanding these banisters and handrail here, corking skirting boards doing all sorts of things. So she's done really well. I've done not so well, but tomorrow's another day. Here we are, it's day two. So it's exactly as I left it last night. The only change to my plans, I thought about this long and hard, is I've gone and picked up another acro from a different hire company this morning because I really want to do the other side first because once I block this in, once I fill all that in up there, I'm going to find it really difficult then to fill in the backside because of the, the height change in the ceiling. So I'm gonna acro up the other side, 
then I'm, it's going to make everything so much easier. I'm going to be able to lose all the wall and then uh, fill in the gaps. Now, it's almost 11 o'clock in the morning and I've just got here. I started at 8, but I've had to do so much running around this morning. I had to go to the hire centre to pick up an acro and I had to go to three or four completely different building supply companies to get all the things that I needed here today. We need the blocks to fill in that space. We don't need the blocks. I could use the bricks, but it's going to be so much quicker and easier if I use blocks. I needed to pick up some cement from my lockup. I needed to pick up some hard wall plaster to make good down here. So we've taken all the skirting boards off in here. That's in order to lay the floor. We've got, and I also had to pick up the flooring. So my plan for today, like I say, it's around 11 o'clock in the morning. And what I want to do when I walk back through that door to go home this evening to our other home, what I want to do is I want to have that wall down and I want to have this floor laid. That's a Herculean task. We'll just have to see how we get on. But that was where I'd planned to be at the end of day two before I started. Obviously, I lost five or six hours work last night due to not being able to carry on because we didn't have what we needed. So it's a big, big ask. But we can only do what we can do. And I won't be too hard on myself if I don't manage it. But that's the goal because that's where I wanted to be by the end of today. I've got a schedule in my head and I really want to stick to it. Right, so we've got all of the, the top of the wall out, which is everything I need out to put my lintels in. So that's great. This is the first big milestone to being finished. You might have noticed on the time lapse, I don't know how well it came up, but we've had this piece of surface fixed trunking across here. I didn't know what was in there. I knew it was some form of electric, but I didn't know what. We've isolated all the electric apart from the lights. So I knew we were safe to work. I knew it wasn't lights but I didn't know if it was sockets or what it was. And it ran all the way along this wall, across this opening that I've just been working on. And then you'll see it continues along this here, down here. Awful, horrible, just everywhere. And I exposed it while I was working up there and realized it was just an earth cable. So it's almost certainly, I'll check this out, but it's almost certainly just an earth for our waterworks under here. So, which is great news. It means what I can do is I can just reroute that straight out this wall, put a new earth rod in the ground, connect it up and earth that way. If it's the main earth rod for the whole building, which I don't think it is because our fuse board's right at the back there. But if it is, then we'll still take it out and we'll do the same thing. We'll just connect another earth rod at the back. Either way, worst case scenario, this can all be run outside the building. There's no reason for it to be all surface fixed like this, looking hideous. So that's great news. Next thing I want to talk to you about is these lintels. These are reinforced concrete lintels, as I said, and you need a minimum bearing of 150 millimeters or six inches either end. What I mean by that, if you imagine this doorway, imagine we were putting one of these lintels in over this doorway, we would need to come 150 millimeters or six inches past the opening. So as you can see, we've clearly got that there. I've made enough space in there that we've got it both sides. So I'm gonna knock up some mortar now, bed these lintels on, and then start rebuilding above. Once that's all done, then we've got the relatively easy job, really, of just removing the rest of that wall. So the next job for me is to knock up some mud. Before I do, I just wanna say, if you're gonna be doing this yourself at home, I'm obviously really, really experienced with this kind of stuff. So the reason I'm very, very comfortable using these concrete lintels rather than RSJ or whatever, is because I know what's above there, I know what weight we're supporting, and it's not very much at all. We're also working on an area of the building that's really, really structurally strong because that wall there that we're supporting forms a corner. So that's one of the strongest parts of a building. And this wall over here is continued right the way through. So it's a really, really strong part of the building anyway. We're really asking relatively little of these lintels because it's mainly just the floor joists that we're picking up. So always worth bearing in mind, if you're not sure, definitely, definitely, definitely get a structural engineer to have a look at it and he'll tell you exactly what you need. Right, let's knock up some mortar. Way 
raised, but I know he's not light. Ah, okay. So I've got to cut this one down to make it fit, which is fine, <laughs> but a bit annoying because it's quite a lot of effort to get him up there. Right, I'll mark him with a pencil and we'll get him cut. that again. That's, that's better. That's beautiful. That is lovely. Right. I'm going to get this section now built in. Above, next lintel, next section, drop the rest of the wall. side done. So you see it's not pretty and that's fine, it's never going to be seen again. So next step is to put another lintel on this other skin of brickwork here directly in front of that one and then block that up and then lose the rest of that wall and then we're done with that project apart from cleanup, significant cleanup to come. down and makes a big difference makes a huge difference to this room you see if you imagine those kitchen units now coming along those that wall and it just makes this a much nicer open kitchen diner I know it's not the biggest of openings that we've made but uh, it will make a significant difference to light and the feel of the room and everything the only downside is it's quite a pile of rubble there so I'm going to go off and get my trailer which isn't here and then I'm gonna load up with this rubble and get that gone because the next job I want to work on is the floor. So this is basically done. Obviously we need to plaster over that, but we'll do that when we're doing the rest of the plastering. Maybe we'll get a bit of that done today. We'll have to wait and see. I'm going to just leave that a few hours now for that to go off because all that mortar is still wet. Once that's dry, that will then do the job that these temporary supports are doing. The temporary supports can come out. There's one other bit here I've left this here because this half brick up here is bearing the weight of this uh, lintel. So what I want to do, I want to actually wait until this has all gone off. And then what I can do is I can borrow one of these acros, pop it underneath this lintel so it can't go anywhere, then take this out. And then if in the process of taking this out, that brick becomes dislodged or loose, I'm still very, very safe and I can just make it right at the time. Right. Let's go get my trailer. Okay, so I've just got back. I've been, got my trailer, got my son, Rockus, who came and he was a phenomenal help. We've loaded up all the bricks, all the rubble, loaded that in the trailer, driven that off to the local recycling center, which isn't that local, um, and then dropped the trailer home again because it's very difficult to park here at the moment, and dropped my son home come back, it's now about 5 p.m. So that's all open and looking great. Got that little bit there to take out, which we've got a plan for, don't wanna do that just yet. Next up, we're gonna look at this floor. Now we're gonna be laying a laminate floor, a tongue and groove, click together laminate floor, super simple, super quick, super easy. But 
we do need the floor to be nice and smooth. So you can see most of this is perfectly fine, but then there's the odd bit where there's some lips in the tiles. So we're gonna to have to go over this with a self-leveling latex. This isn't too bad here, but over here you can see it's a lot worse. And over here, it's even worse still. So we need to basically smooth all this out so it's all a nice smooth level finish. And we've also got to fill in over here where the wall was. We'll use some sand and cement here and uh, take off this. I don't know what this is or was, but we'll take that off and just make sure everything is smooth and flat. Then it's underlay, then it's flooring. So you'll notice here where we've taken the skirting boards off, the idea here is that the new flooring will go just over that edge where the skirting board sits and then the skirting board comes down on top. So I do have to do a little bit of plastering here, but I'm actually going to do that after. It might sound crazy to do it after, but I know I've got a full day tomorrow doing lots of bits of plastering. And I'm really keen to get this floor done. It's a big milestone for me and my wife. So we're gonna crack on and do that. And I'm quite happy to we'll just put a dust sheet down when I do the bits of plastering over the new floor tomorrow. It's a really robust flooring. So it'll put up with our wear and tear over it over the next few days while we're still working while it's a building site. But uh, yeah, let's, let's get on. Just a self-leveling floor latex and a little tool like this is invaluable when you're doing small little patches. It says I'm supposed to wait four hours. It actually says I'm supposed to wait 24 hours. It says it takes four hours to cure. And it says after four hours, you can lay tiles on it. But you should wait 24 hours for soft floor coverings. Well, I suppose our underlay is soft, but I don't think that's really what they mean. I think they mean for carpet, because then you're going to be walking on it and it will manipulate what's underneath. So I think four hours is the realistic factory recommendation for what we're doing. I'm not going to wait four hours. <laughs> I can't. I, it, not because I have to do it. <laughs> I just can't wait four hours. I can. So, uh, so far it's been about half an hour. <laughs> so what I'm thinking I'm going to do is roll the underlay out really, really gently. Not now. Give it another half an hour or so and um, chance it. finished we're not where I was hoping I would be but we've done a considerable amount I was hoping I'd lay the floor down through there it's not a lot of work to be fair compared to this room but I've been beaten not really because I'm beat I could do it I could carry on but it's nearly half past nine I need to do things like take that little bit of skirting board off and I've just taken this bit off and I was making so much noise it's not really fair on the neighbours which we have now for the first time in a while. So I'm knocking it on the head at half past nine and that's a hell of a good day's work, I, I, I think. I'm really happy with that. All right, we're not exactly where I was thinking I would be, but then I've had a lot of delays. I've spent a lot of time traveling around in the car that I hadn't planned on. But overall, that's out. That's all gone off nicely. Taking the acros out, as you can see, the floor, 
in the dining room is down. So in case you were wondering why there's no floor there, because these kitchen units are gonna carry on along there. Right, I'm absolutely beat guys, I'm knackered. I'm going to sign off and uh, gonna be back tomorrow doing, I don't know yet, we'll see. I think my wife's coming tomorrow to help me for a little bit, so we'll just see how we get on. But uh, that will do for today. Thanks for watching everyone. Please make sure you press that like button before you go. Leave me a comment down below and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. Cheers guys, speak to you soon.